Good evening. Welcome to our Thursday night Bible study. It is Thursday, March 18th. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at some scriptures and then going to do a little bit of personal sharing again, part two. So I want to thank those of you that continue to watch these videos, those of you that support me. Uh, I'll be talking about that later. I'm just, I'm just overwhelmed by the support that I, that I get from, from you people. Um, so all I can say is thanks. Thanks a lot. I uh, appreciate it. Appreciate those of you, appreciate, appreciate those of you that continue to watch these videos. Those of you that, uh, especially those of you that are committed to the daily devotions that we have every morning. Uh, I'm so many of you that watch the Sunday service. I'm just really impressed with all of you. So I appreciate every single one of you. Let me open with a prayer. Father, as we look in your word again, and we look at the early church, and we look at Paul and Barnabas, and the zeal that they had, um, the love they had for you, uh, their willingness to go through incredible persecution and not give up. Uh, God, they're an inspiration to me, and I'm sure to many, many pastors out there. So I pray, God, that you would speak to us here again tonight. Amen. Hey, good evening, Rob. Good evening, Anna. Uh, we're in Acts chapter 14. I'm gonna we're gonna look at part do the part Bible study and then I'm gonna share some more some more personal stuff. Um, so let's take a look. We're in Acts chapter 14. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna we're gonna go through it verse by verse. Um, if you remember before I start, remember we, we ended last week with Paul being stoned. He was in Lystra and and led many to the Lord, and as a result, the Jews turned the crowds against him, and this time they didn't just threaten him, they took him out of the city and stoned him. Now, stoning was a death sentence, but he survived. Miraculously, he survived. So now we get to verse 21. It says, they, they preached the good news in that city. They went, they, they went to Derby. They, they preached the good news in that city and won a large number of disciples. They then... First of all, let me talk about they, they won a large number of uh, of disciples. Um, uh, the first thing I want you to notice is it, it says disciples. They won over a large number of disciples. They didn't just win over a large number of Christians. They they won over disciples. There's a, there's a big difference here. You can be a Christian and not be a disciple. Uh, the, a disciple is, is defined as someone that's learning from a teacher someone that's sitting under a teacher. The disciples of Jesus were sitting under Jesus' teaching. John the Baptist had disciples, the Bible talks about. Paul, Barnabas, all the disciples, they had disciples. There was people that sat under them that they taught. So there's a lot of Christians that, that, that are not disciples. Um, they, they're, they're, they're not sitting under a, under a teacher. Um, approximately 50% of Christians do not, when, when we were able to meet it in churches, over 50% didn't, chose not to go to a church. So they were not sitting under anybody to, to teach them. And, and notice what it says in Matthew. I'm sure you, I've read this verse so many times to you. You've heard it so many times. The, you know, the Great Commission, the last words that Jesus gives his disciples as before he leaves the, the world, before he leaves earth. Jesus says, all the authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. He didn't say, go and make Christians of all nations. Go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Go make disciples and teach them. That's what pastors are supposed to do. That's what Christians are supposed to do. Christians aren't supposed to sit under a teacher, someone that teaches them. Uh, now, if you notice here, we'll go back to Acts. Here's what's interesting. It says, then they returned. They won over a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch. They went back to Lystra, the same city where Paul was stoned. Why? Because they, 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 want, to, they to, want to strengthen the disciples. It says, strengthen, verse 22, strengthening the disciples and encourage them to remain true to their faith. 
they, they went back and continued to teach them, continued to, to, de to disciple them, to, to strengthen them, to encourage them, to remain true to their faith. Now imagine Paul going back to Leicester where they had stoned him. It's like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Tell me Paul wasn't committed to those that he led to the Lord. Those that he led to the Lord, he cared so much about them that he was willing to risk his life to go back to continue teaching them. Uh, so I guess the question I have is, some of you go to other churches. How committed is your pastor? How committed are the, your church leaders to you? Are they aware of your needs? Uh, are you are you missed when they don't when they don't see you there? Uh, make sure, make sure, whatever church you go to, that the pastor genuinely cares about you genuinely cares about you that that's why uh, i'm not against big churches but boy i'm against them if they don't run right because there's no way that the pastor knows everybody in his congregation at those large churches it is literally impossible for them to know that so there's there's not much of a connection between it's kind of like if we just relied on these videos all the time what what relationship would there be, except for those of you that I know real well already? Sure, you would see my face, you would know me, but I wouldn't know you. I, I have that now. I have different people from other countries that have that have friended me. I don't know them. I've never met them. I have I no. I look up their pictures on on Facebook, but I, I I've never met them. There's, there's, there's a little relationship there. So bigger churches, they lose that. They lose that relationship between the pastor and the, and the, and the people, uh, which is just so important, just so important. So, so how, 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 what kind of relationship do you have with your pastor at your church? Um, interesting here, um, in verse 23, it says, Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church with prayer and fasting committed to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. They went back to these churches and they, and they picked appointed elders. Now, now, an elder is simply a leader of the church. Some elders have the gift of teaching. I'm an elder in, the, in my church. I'm an overseer, elder overseer in my church. God has gifted me with the ability to teach. And so they went back there and appointed elders in the churches so that they would have someone in those churches to teach the people. Remember, that's what a disciple is. A disciple is someone that sits under a teacher. Uh, it, was, it was important for, for them to, to have a teacher. Uh, interesting, I looked it up and over 20% of churches in America are without a pastor. I know I know quite a few churches in, in our area right around here that don't have pastors. Uh, boy, how, how can uh, people sit under a teacher if they don't even have a teacher or a pastor there? And then it's sad, as I've shared with you many times, that 70% of pastors don't like their jobs. They don't even like teaching. 50% say they would quit if they had another means of livelihood. So how, how can you really learn from someone that doesn't even really want to be there? So verse 23, that says that's why they fasted and that's why they, they prayed, making the decision to making sure that they picked the right person, the right person to be the elder teacher in those, in those churches. So the question now is, as I read all this is, well, let, let me finish reading here. It says, um, uh, let go back. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. After going through Syria, they came into Pamphylia, and when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Attic, Attil, At, Attilia. From Attilia, they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had been doing through them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. And they stayed there for a long time with the disciples. So the question I always say when we do a Bible study and when we look at verses, the question always then is, what is God telling us in these scriptures? 
what does God tell us? It's great that we know what Paul and Barnabas did, but what, what, is, what is God saying to us? So whenever you study a Bible, it's important to know who's speaking, who they're speaking to, what they're teaching those people, and what God is teaching you. So let, what is God teaching us in these scriptures? I believe, first of all, that if, if you have a great pastor, if you have a great pastor, do everything you can to keep him or her. Because from what I'm reading, there's not that many out there. That's why so many churches are without a pastor. So if you have a great pastor, boy, it's important that you support them. They say this. Now, I don't necessarily agree with this, but this is what they say, that the three jobs that have the largest meltdown, where, where they end up getting depressed, where they end up getting anxiety, where they end up having marriage problems, where pastors end up cheating on their spouses, etc., etc. The three are, number one is, is, milita is military during the war. Number two are police officers. And number three are pastors. And it's like, now I've been all three. <laughs> I've been in the military during the war. I've been a police officer and I've been a pastor. And I don't see where Pat, where it's that hard being a pastor. I, I don't understand why they would put that as the third. But there, there must be a reason they did. Must be a reason. It must be because many pastors have those kind of meltdowns. And I could see where it could probably happen if 70% of them don't even want to be there. Then I could understand why there would be meltdowns. Uh, so if you have a great pastor... I know some of you are, attended Rosewood, and boy, you had a great pastor there for, for a lot of years. And I never sat under a better teacher than, than Dan Brink. Uh, he was a great pastor. I worked with him for 10 years. Uh, now, unfortunately, you couldn't keep him because he retired, but you supported him all those. He would have stayed there if you hadn't supported him. So important to support the pastor. Uh, number number. Uh, important to get to know them better so that you're aware of their needs. Uh, I was impressed with uh, with Dandy when he knew that I was going to take this test, reaching out to me before I took the test to tell me that he was praying for me. Then after the test, he even texted me to find out how I had done. He was concerned uh, about me. Uh, that's That's support. And then support them with your spiritual gifts. God has given each of you a spiritual gift to use in your church. You need to support your pastor with those gifts. Uh, it's unfortunate that over 70% of Christians that go to church on a Sunday just attend. They only attend. They don't use their spiritual gift anywhere. I mean, it's great that you attend. I'm sure the pastors appreciate that. But boy, they're looking for they're looking for workers. They're looking for workers, people that are willing to help them to 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 to, to make the church everything it can be. Um, th th this is one of the reasons I'm sure that it causes pastors to burn out, that they don't get the support that they need, and then to support them financially. Uh, that's why Scripture tells you that anybody that teaches in a church is is God says is is due to be taken care of financially. Now I've shared before that I haven't done that for the past 11 years of doing of running collision because I've been fortunate enough to have my son support me during that ministry and find and realistically the church couldn't afford to to support me financially but this is where I want to get into now into my little bit of personal sharing part two okay um, a lot of things have changed and if you listen to my my, my first message that I did on this, and I'm, not, I, I'm seeing the names here, and I know you did, uh, things have changed, a lot, a lot of things have changed in my life, uh, and, and I've, I've just been so blessed, I have been so blessed by, by, by you people. Uh, you've reached out to me with prayers, with your prayers, you've reached out to me with, with, with offering financial support. I'm literally overwhelmed. Uh, most of my videos, my daily devotions, get between 50 and 60 views. The one where I shared my heart is, is up to 233 views already with 101 comments. 
101 people that commented voicing their concern for me. Wow. Wow. Do you know how, do you know how that blesses me? Do you know how much that blesses me? To, 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 to care that much? Uh, many, of, I, many of you have given me phone calls. How many of you here right now that are watching this have, have, have personally given me a phone call? Just today I got a phone call from OJ and Sheila. They had just watched the video and they were concerned. They're our worship leaders. They were concerned and they're offering up all kinds of help to me. They don't even attend our church. They, they just come to support us with, with leading worship. Uh, they belong to another church. But they've for the last few years, they have been leading worship at Collision. And they have a strong desire to keep doing that when we meet again on Sunday nights. Uh, Paul, I see you watching these videos constantly. Uh, Collision is going to rely on you. and I know you and Jamie have worked before. We're looking forward to having you and Jamie work again leading worship. Uh, but OJ and Sheila reached out to me because they're very technical, extremely technical. And he was guiding me in, in how I could reach more people via uh, YouTube. Now, I put all my videos on YouTube, but... <laughs> I don't know much about it. I don't know much about it. Of course, he's a whiz at it. And, and when he's talking to me, he's like, Phew! most of us going over my head. It's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. But but he's but he's a young guy, young couple that's given me that kind of support now. That doesn't even belong to our church. And many of you watching this, many of you watching this, you don't belong to collision. You don't belong to collision. And yet you're supporting collision. You're supporting, in, in, in a lot of ways, you're supporting Collision just by watching these videos. You're supporting Collision financially. We get as much or more of our offerings outside of Collision as we do from Collision. Just this past Sunday, we had a special offering. We wanted to raise enough money to buy a, a, a large water buffalo for $900 and a small water buffalo for $750 for an orphanage in, in India that relied because they lost water buffaloes from their monsoons. And we raised enough. We raised enough to buy a large buffalo, a small buffalo, and still had like another $475 towards another water buffalo. That, that support, that, that is incredible support. And much, a lot of that came from you people that don't even belong to collision. That's the kind of support that I'm feeling. Do you understand now why I'm, why I'm excited? No, no, I have to admit when, when that first happened, when I failed the test, I, but again, I, I was more depressed for my son, feeling concerned for my son, like I had let him down. But in my heart of hearts, I knew God loved me and God was going to be there for me. And and I'm at ease if, if he's not able to pay me, which I'm sure he's not going to be able to pay me. God has just shown me that I have people that, that love me. I have people that support me. I have people that care about my, the ministry. Incredible support. Incre I mean, 101 people took the time to make a comment on, and, and that's just on Facebook. That's not on Instagram. Instagram was like another 40-some views with comments. It's like incredible support. Incredible support. The last one is is uh, one of the people in our church uh, got a hold of me, uh, Becky Kuiper, concerned that I need we needed prayer, that I needed prayer. So they're they're going to meet at the at Heritage Park. The last two Sundays we've met at two different parks to pray for other people. We prayed for Jackie a couple weeks ago, who flew all the way from here from Iowa. She's in hospice with cancer, flew all the way down here so we could pray with her. Uh, and then last Sunday, we, we met with Sharon Bruyer, who is, who is who's, has serious medical issues that the doctors don't know what to do for her. And we prayed, anointed with oil, to pray for healing for her. And now this Sunday at 2 o'clock at Heritage Park, they're going to meet to pray with me, to pray for me. It's like, Wow. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I, I'm i feeling loved. I'm feeling supported. I, I'm feeling encouraged. I'm, I'm just feeling so, so blessed. So blessed. So 
thanks to those of you that reached out to me. Thanks for those of you that are praying for me. Thanks for those of you that are praying for Collision. We're excited about the future of Collision. I, I'll just share a little bit again. We have a church, and I'll even name it New Life Church, over a huge church that I was, I did ministry there for like seven years. I was a janitor there for four years because I want, I just loved being around the church. Uh, got a history there. They are going to allow us to start meeting when the pandemic is lightens up to where we can go back in and, and, and worship. They're going to allow us to rent the facility on Sunday nights. So we're going to have collision back on Sunday nights. Now, some of the things that excite me is it's, it's something new. It's, it's a new, it's, it's something different. Uh, Angel, thank you, Angel. Love you too. Uh, one of my nieces in, in Bismarck, North Dakota. Uh, we're, we're excited that, uh, that it's going to be like a reboot, like a kickoff again. We haven't, we haven't met now for over a year. It's going to be a different time. There's going to be a different energy. There's going to be at a different location. We're going to have a real nursery, a real nursery. We're going to have real classrooms. We're going to have a real sanctuary or, or, or even the chapel, whichever one that we end up renting. And then I'm excited about this. I know that many of you grew up, I know you grew up where you went to church in the morning and then you went to church on Sunday nights. Most churches have done away with that now. Uh, this is an opportunity for people to go to other church, that go to other churches to come in and worship with us on a Sunday night. We're not looking to steal people from other churches. I'm going to impress that on them t t solidly. We're not looking for shifting of saints. We're not, but more people create an energy. So, because we're still trying to reach the lost, so if someone that was unsaved, if, if you brought a visitor that was non-saved or that had been away from church for a long time, and you brought them to collision on Sunday night, we want some energy there, energy. So when they're sitting there and they're seeing maybe a hundred people with their hands raised up worshiping, they're going to look around like, "What's going on here?" And then we want, again, we want the Holy Spirit showing up there. The Holy Spirit's presence there. So when those same people sit there, they're kind of like, what is that? I've shared with you many times. I remember my wife and I, when, when, I, when, when we first, I was, I was leading a, a youth group. I wasn't a Christian. I was not a Christian. Uh, but I was working with youth. And some of the youth that were coming there were from Calvary Chapel. And they, when they come, they were bringing their Bibles, and the kids in my youth group were gathered around them. So I thought, I better go to Calvary Chapel and find out what I'm up against. So we, we went to Costa Mesa, Calvary Chapel. We're sitting in there. That night, they just showed a movie. It wasn't even a regular service. They showed a movie, but they worshiped at the beginning. And when we got out, I asked my wife on the way back, I said, did you sense something when we were sitting there? We both just sensed, now at the time I didn't know what it was. Now I know it was the Holy Spirit. We, we, were, we were both just like feeling the presence heavily of something in that room. I, I'm, I'm sitting in there and I'm looking around and I'm seeing young people and middle-aged people and older people worshiping, uh, obviously loving the Lord. And I'm just like, I'm impressed. I'm just looking around and I'm just feeling something in the in presence in the room, not realizing it was the Holy Spirit. That's what we're looking for again in collision. So we're excited about the future of collision. Uh, I'm excited about my future. I'm excited about those of you that are praying for you, for me. I'm excited about those of you that expressed that your willingness to support me financially if it's needed. Uh, I'm impressed with all of that. It just, it overwhelms me. It overwhelms me. Uh, I'm just, I'm just wishing that every pastor in America or around the world could have what I have, that kind of support. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I don't know if Paul felt this from his people. I, uh, I, I mean, I, probably not. He was stoned to death stone so he may not even have what the, the blessings that God has given me given me incredible blessings with each one of you so all I can say is thank you thank you thank you
appreciate every every single one of you, okay? Let me close with a prayer. Father, I thank you for those that are watching now, those that will watch later, those that continue to watch these devotions, those that are committed to you, God, and committed to me and my ministry. Uh, God, you have blessed me with some incredible people in my life, uh, people that love me, that care about me, willing to help me uh, with prayer, with support, with finances, with, with whatever is needed. God, thank you, thank you, thank you for the people you put in my life. Uh, and I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching tonight. Appreciate every single one of you. Um, tomorrow morning will be our daily devotion, as it always is, at 8 o'clock. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Sunday is our is our worship service. So thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Thank you for all the hearts I see coming up right now. God bless you all. Have a great night.